Good morning, afternoon, evening. Yeah, welcome to Questions Friday for January 7th of 2022. So, Happy New Year. Um, I'm going to put something down here, a link for all of those who are here live. And if you are here live, please do drop a comment or question down here onto the questions tab. And if you are watching after the fact and would like to join us live, uh, just sign up for our newsletters and that's where you'll find the, the invitation to the lives. But if you can give me just a moment here, I will put in a link for you all which will get you to um, a discount on the brand new Quantum Healer Wisdom Wand Pendant, or the Quantum Wisdom for short. So let's see, I'll drop this here into the tab. Thank you for bearing with me while we're having technicalities here. Hmm. Trying to figure out how to copy and paste a code from Facebook Messenger that I sent to myself. Let's see. Oh, and I see that Randy, our computer guru, has all the photos for that wand up this morning for the quantum wisdom. That's fantastic. All right. So for those of you who are live, there is a code right there. It's a link. And then when you go to the website, just look for the quantum wisdom. All right. Well, <clears throat> Nice and snowy and cold here in South Dakota. Oh my. Jump over here to chat and see how everybody's doing. Hey, hello from Sweden and the North Carolina coast and Northern Idaho, Minnesota. A lot of you in the same nice climate is here. Hey, Felix from Columbia. Well. Awesome. South Africa, Southern California. Hey, somebody from the UK for the first time. Welcome, Vicky. Uh, Alberta, Canada. So, <clears throat> we will begin with the heart space as usual. All right. So, if you'd like to join us, just close your eyes, put your attention to your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that loving energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart, grounding you with the earth. Next, we connect heart to heart with creation, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Breathe in that light of creation into the heart. In that third breath, breathe in both the energy of creation and of earth into you. You then become that pillar of light that is grounded, connected, in the heart space and supported. All right, so we make a grand vessel with all of us here. We are all holding such a high space and it's a soul level space and we hold it together and anybody who steps in in the future to watch this video, <clears throat> they're just brought right into this space as well. <laughs> And I know there's some pretty phenomenal folks here that that show up here every week. And plus just the space that we're holding on a soul level anymore. It's just pretty phenomenal. All right, so questions for today. We'll start over here on the email, emails for the questions tab. Um, 
Let's see, I have a question. There's been massive spraying chemtrails in my area. What can be done and what tool can be used? So pretty interesting with the, the whole concept of mass consciousness, reality, chemtrails, and many other things that are created out of fear is that we've seen in the very beginning when there were chemtrails that there was somebody who basically that was their reality. They were like, oh, chemtrails. They talked about it, shared it. Another person in another location is, oh, chemtrails. And it begins to be a reality that is created because we are all powerful creators. We live in this world of creation. And this creation has usually come from fear, necessity, survival, programs, outside energies, being in the head where our consciousness resides. When we can move our consciousness back into the heart, we are even more powerful creators when we are in the heart than in the head. So how do you change creation? It is simple. Go into the heart space, invite all that you are in, consciousness. Consciousness is what repatterns energy in all energy is creation. What's consciousness? It's your soul. You can just see it as simple as that. It's a little bit more than that, but we can simply say it as the soul. So the more that you go into the heart, do the work, ask the soul, and, and the work doesn't have to be work. The work is simply going into the heart space and allowing yourself to step more into alignment with the soul, bringing in your light, and of course the tools do help. So if you are working with chemtrails, go in the heart space, get yourself a wisdom wand, and from there do the exercises of being within the zero point space, putting your attention onto the chemtrails, and allowing them to dissipate. Harmonizing, cleaning, clearing, uncreating. However it is that is perceived to you, it is going to shift and change when you are truly in the heart and working with these wisdom fields. Because it either repatterns the reality of that creation or it repatterns your connection with that creation. So there are some things in mass consciousness that are very much woven in and embedded into there. <clears throat> and there are some things that are not as deeply embedded. But all of mass consciousness is unweaving right now anyway. And when we're using, especially like the wisdom tools, it is easier to unweave yourself from a lot of what is out there. Uh, so I hope that answers the question on chemtrails. It's just another part of the creation that we can that we can adjust. We really drew it again. Ethan, is the quantum wisdom pendant the wisdom wand as a pendant? <laughs> yeah, actually it is. So we have the quantum healer, and you know the quantum healer, the really small little one i don't have a quantum yes i do have a quantum healer sitting right here this is the quantum healer and this is the new quantum wisdom um they're pretty comparable in size um <clears throat> the quantum wisdom wand is longer it's a heavier gauge it also comes in silver so the quantum wisdom comes in silver or in copper with the brass tube. It is the quantum healer, but it is also the wisdom wand. So somebody had asked here, as soon as we came out with the wisdom wand, somebody's like, okay, does the quantum healer energetics go in there? And, you know, it wasn't the intention to put the quantum healer energetics into the wisdom wand, but when this one was created, it slipped fully in. So now then, the wisdom wands, any of them that you own, the large, medium, or now micro, 
large mini micro um, any of these wisdom wands now contain the energetics of the quantum healers which is huge because you know the quantum healer brings through the energies of the golden fire and light rod as we learned with the light anchoring with the um, wisdom wand they can use that to anchor columns of light but they also contain the dragon wand that you can open up a field to work with the highest aspects aspects of the dragons it contains the fairy wand that gentle peaceful energy that you connect more with the earth and the fey and the inner earth beings we also have the shaman's wand which is one that you basically use to create fields bubbles around something and it uncreates itself um, the story of the shaman's wand that i ever that i always gave and the shaman's wand again is found in all of the newer wands the quantum healer and all of the wisdom wands is the shaman's wand when it was first made i was dealing with a hiatal hernia which is where the stomach flips upside down worked with it for three years could never clear it had something to do with emotional i sat down right after the wisdom wand or the um <laughs> sorry i went blank right after the um the other one which one were we talking about um so when i sat down to one stomach where that hiatal hernia was where it flips upside down all i did was create a bubble around it and two minutes later i went to look and it was like the stomach was never herniated in the first place it just clears um, just completely clears so let's see and then what other wand are in, is in there so then we just have the five wands all together but they are all in the wisdom now which can also be found in the tiny pendant <laughs> uh, let's see Ethan any news on a possible wisdom generator not yet we still haven't figured out the the wisdom generators as of yet um there there's still something more coming in and coming through before before they're going to step in um so sometime hopefully we'll have a wisdom generator um mirna i felt i've bonded well with the other tools i'm not sure i feel the same connection with the wisdom wand any suggestions i'm heading on a vacation and plan on doing a lot of earth healing and wanted to take take it but not sure I can work with it well so these fields like the wisdom field the um, you know some of the, the newer ones the regeneration the chalice there's a lot of these fields that some people a, a small percentage of people just don't don't jive with they don't touch them they don't even want to look in that direction um, we have some pretty phenomenal friends that are out there in consciousness work that we've been um, surprised to see too that there's a couple of people who don't really like to work with like the chalice energy in that one just in particular all the others they're good with um, but that was something that when some of these energies came through that it was said that some people would really resonate with them and some wouldn't it just depends on it, it, it's it's your soul the, the resonant part of it is your soul saying yes this is for us in this right now moment of our path and if it doesn't resonate then the soul is just going to say no this is not part of our path at this very moment um but actually mirna i'm not really feeling that is truly the case there um you know, I do see that that wisdom field is held around you, but it's almost like you are kind of sidestepping out of it too. So I would say just keep that wisdom wand around you and because it creates that cocoon around the person and it brings in everything that you are. And so it almost seems like there is an aspect of you that just does not want to fully step in and integrate with, with all that you are. And that is perfectly okay. 
But I feel that if you keep that wisdom wand around and use it on occasion, you know, and just having it with you, that it's going to allow that aspect of you to finally just step in, to just let go of what it is in its creation that it wants to hold on to so badly. Because that's what we see is that if there are parts of us who are really stuck or held holding on to to some part of creation like let's say it's a past life and you know you had some oath to take care of you know your daughter's kids whatever and so you you create these oaths these vows these promises this just for an example that you have to take care of this and so it's just one of those things that you don't want to let go of. You feel like you still are having to do something. And that's just what it feels like with that aspect that I feel that is not fully stepping into that field is that it's um, that once it does and just being in the heart space with it and ask the soul, because when you're working with any of these tools, it is always the soul that is in charge. And it is between your soul and that aspect and you and everything. So, you know, be in the heart space, ask the soul to assist, and it will not steer you wrong. Uh, Victoria, good morning. In reading one of the reviews about the Wisdom Wand, the post said she saw hundreds of wayward spirits looking to go into the column of light. Is this a given whether we are intending something else? Um, so... With, with the wisdom wands, when you are creating the columns of light that we create, those particular columns of light do hold the energetics of the golden fire, that golden fire and light wand, because that is a part of the wisdom wand as well as that golden fire and light wand. Now, when you use the golden fire and light wands and you make a column of light, it is a column of light that will allow ghost way words to they'll they'll be attracted to that they'll come there and yes they cross over um so with the wisdom wands if you're making a column of light with it then yes way words will if they see it they will find it and they will go there they'll be attracted to it they'll go there their soul will come in to activate the sacred heart and it'll take them home fantastic service but if you have the wisdom wand and you're not doing the column of light, it will still cross over ghosts, even if that is not your intention, because of the fact that this also contains within that field, the golden fire is a part of this. And that golden fire energy is the one that, that brings the soul in to activate the sacred heart. And when you are a disincarnate, a ghost, the soul comes in and just takes you home, does the healing work, takes you home. So if you were just carrying the wand on your person and a ghost wayward comes into your field, that's just what will happen is the soul will come in and offer them that way home. Hopefully that answers your question there. Um, Ethan, can you share where you got the awesome shirt? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure where I got the shirt at. I think it was $6 t-shirts.com. Um, it's the knight with his sword. I don't know. And with that halo, for some reason, I feel it's a self-portrait sometimes. From, from, from way back when. Uh, JR, does it matter which end of the quantum healer, wisdom wand, golden light, and fire rod you point to the subject to shift the energy? No, not at all. It does not matter which end is which. So when I design any of these style of wands with the more of the wraps up towards the end, that's what I intended to use as the handle just because you have more wraps there. And to me, this just feels like, you know, with that looser wrap, this just feels like the end to project as you're projecting energy. But it does not matter if you hold it the other way because it is your intent of projecting the energy. And really, this is the same. It's just simply a field of energy is all this is. It's just a field of energy. And so you can send it out either way. And that's the same with the dowsing rods and the wands. Pardon me. 
Oh, I have been on a sneezing spree for two days. Oh my goodness, unsettled weather. All right. Um, Nika, the link, even though it says discount quantum wisdom in the link. Okay, so when you get to the shop page with that link that I gave you guys, that link that I gave you guys is only the, the discount link. From there, um, you'll have to probably just go to the search bar and go quantum wisdom. And then type in quantum wisdom in the search. Or if you look on the products, it might be there now too. But um, So yeah, that discount code that is here for live viewers, you still have to find the product. All right, and some good mornings from Colorado and Ecuador and Hawaii. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for all being here. Thanks, Ron, for helping me come up with the word shaman wand. Oh my goodness. You know, my mom worries sometimes that she's like, well, gosh, I don't want to be getting Alzheimer's and forgetting things. And we're all like, you know, it is okay because our minds are being totally rewired, reworked. And if you can't remember yesterday, it's actually kind of a beautiful thing because we should truly be living right here and now and not worrying about up there or judging what happened back there. So, you know, lots of memories this week can be a good thing. Hey there, thank you, Tam, for putting up that link here. All right. Yep, and then just um, use that code and it should automatically come up on the checkout. All right, so let's see if there's anything else new. Um, the quantum healers will no longer be on the website. We have a few of those. Um, the water rings, the small set of water rings. Oh man, we're doing like 30% off on those things. That's like below cost on especially one of those for sure. Not sure about the others, but we kind of need them gone and they need a good home. So if you're looking for a fantastic deal on some tensor rings, and these are great tensor rings. I mean, there's the golden fire, the regeneration, the earth resonance, which is that 333 megahertz ring. Um, yeah, some great rings there on our water ring clearance special. So do check those out. Um, we still have some of the old wings of talk on clearance. Um, what else? Let's see. We still have quite a few of those little quantum grid points, the ones in Shungite and the ones with crystals in them. They're on the um, on the prototype product page, so we do have some of those still. And I'm just trying to think of anything else new. Um, yeah, we pushed hard to get these little guys and the silver ones all ready to go. Um, and of course, there is the comparison to the mini. Uh, let's see. And what else? And we have a few other projects that we have on the back burner still. Um, and of course, I've been doing um, private sessions as well. And those private sessions can be found on um, social media as well. I'll actually put up a link here to that. We will end up putting that, that private session link up onto the website as well. But um, it's been pretty profound doing those because it seems like, you know, when people book a session, and I'm just going to put it down here on the chat, it seems like when people book a session, things already start to go, as we all know that happens. Um, and... Yeah, it's just been it's been pretty fantastic holding space for for those sessions because um, yeah, it's just been nice to see things shift for people. But anyway, here's a link for the private sessions, <clears throat> which.
which um, the reason that I brought that up was because we're here in the studio and we were going to open up the studio January 1st. Well, we were going to open up Solstice, but um, don't have all the meditations done for all of the chambers yet. And when we do get the meditations done, I'll definitely put those up on YouTube as well. Um, because the meditations for each of those chambers are going to be, should be profound in their own way. And there's still something coming through for a meditation that um, we just haven't put anything up yet. So let's see, going back to questions. All right. Okay. This is my first time here and welcome. After four days here at the new house, when I awakened in the night, I was so ridiculously dizzy, I fell over backward, still on my bed. I noticed electrical lines and large poles in the mountain above, and... Um, so, what I would suggest is, let's see, I was just seeing if you, if you own any of the tools. Um, you know, if you're moving into a new space and you do feel that dizziness and, you know, an electrical comes to, to your awareness, I would suggest almost any of the tools that we create. Um, a pendant is really a great way to, to really bolster your field, um, you know, and the new quantum wisdom are fairly inexpensive especially for what they are They're pretty phenomenal so you know perhaps a quantum wisdom pendant would be a good one to have in the space either that or the tensor field generators that we create we create um these spherical forms we have one called the golden fire that's the most economical and it has a two and a half mile sphere of influence where it restructures all electromagnetics um and it could be something with the the earth energies there too um, because there's always geopathic and geomagnetic lines that can flow places and so you know using any of the tools in the space should remediate the the energetic issues no matter what those energetic issues are um, so i'd still say try a pendant and if you'd rather work with the environment, then a tensor field generator would be a good option. Um, yeah, I was trying to feel in anything else with that, but it kind of does feel like earth energies there as well. Um, geo, geopathic, geomagnetic. Uh, question. I brought, bought a quantum healer wand about a year back and I'm never sure what i can do with it could you kindly advise i'm not familiar with familiar with creating columns of light so the quantum healer um or the quantum wisdom or the mini wisdom wands doesn't matter any of these wand forms are fantastic just to keep on the person and passively because they create that field around you so if you want to actively use those wands, um, then you can, if you're more drawn to like, let's say working with the dragons, to work with the dragons with the quantum healer, there are the instructions on the dragon's wand, the dragon wand page. But basically it is simple as anytime we do any of the work with wands or any of the tools that we're actively using, we take the three breaths to go into the heart space. Once you are in that sacred space of the heart, then you can then use the, the wisdom wand if you are intending to work with the dragons and just pretend, imagine, imagine from within the heart space, opening up this field, this space, like a high vibrational room that has the dragons there, that has that higher aspect of the dragons. Once you open up that space, just sit and be and open up communication. Um, if you don't see or hear, it is okay. It's part of our attuning ourselves to a certain frequency, a certain bandwidth that we can see, hear, or feel. 
So our extra sensory perceptions are sight, feeling, knowing, hearing, you know, tasting, all kinds of things. But to begin to trust those, if you don't have them, it's just being in the heart and being open and still and having that intention that you start to work with those extra sensory perceptions. So that's what would it be if you're working with the dragons. Pretty much the same if you're working with the Fae, is that just having this around and it creates that field, just inviting those Fae beings to come in, the fairy. Now, the fields that these create, you're, you don't have to worry about anything in a lower consciousness, a lower vibration, lower consciousness, stepping into the field and playing because these higher consciousness tools are creating the space to where only those that resonate can even see, let alone be within this space. So they only resonate with those that are in the heart. Um, then to work with it as a shaman's wand, again, it's just running energy with it, imagining, using your imagination, like when you're using the, the quantum healer, or if you're using any of the wands, like let's say you are working on a shoulder, just imagine creating a bubble of energy around that physical space, or maybe it's around emotion or situation, anything of that nature. You create the bubble around it. And it's just the intention of, you, you try not to have an intention. Soft intentions are the way to go. A hard intention is when we are looking at our shoulder and like we're like, okay, I want to put this back into place and I want to heal it and I want to make it better for my softball game tomorrow. That's a hard intention. A soft intention, your soul knows what you want to do. So as you come in and you're putting the bubble around it, that is the only intention that you need because your soul knows the intention that you want to heal this up. Um, and so you're not going to put it into a box. You're not going to limit it, but you put a bubble around it and then you let it go. And that's kind of a hard shift from the old paradigms of, okay, doing, I have to be specific. Here's my outcome. I'm visualizing my outcome. Here we go. That was all human creation, head, mental, limiting beliefs, limiting everything, limiting everything, everything when you come from here. So when you're doing the work, like with the quantum healer, which is what we're answering the questions for, doing the work with the quantum healer or any of the wands, is, is that when you put the bubble around something to, you already know that you're going to heal it, clear it, whatever, and then you let it go. And you allow your soul to come in and do the work in the highest and best. Um, and it may not be how you look. And that's the thing. When we do the higher soul work and we're doing it from the human perspective, a lot of times what our human perspective wants or desires or wants to see is not what is in alignment with the soul. So it's just part of the whole new paradigm as well is that surrendering to the soul and the allowing of something greater than your imaginations, greater than your limitations to come through. Um, so anyway, there's some basics on working with the quantum healer. I know that for a couple of years, I said I was going to make the video for the quantum healer, but I kept referring people to go back to the other wand websites to find our, the other wand web pages, to find the descriptions, to do the work with them. That's kind of what we're still doing right now with this new quantum, with the new quantum healer wisdom wand, is, is that we're still kind of referring people back. If you want to do this, with, use this as a dragon wand, go to the dragon wand page. Eventually, I would like to do an entire workshop on this wand. I think that's what we're going to be doing in 2022 is a lot of tool workshops. So I look forward to doing a workshop at some point in time this year on the wisdom wands and we'll do it live so that it can be recorded for everybody. Um, so Vicki, the, just to understand the quantum healer is now in the new wisdom mini wand in all the wisdom wands. 
Yes. So the quantum healer is now in all of the wisdom wands. All of the wisdom wands now contain the energetics of the quantum healers, which is pretty huge. Um, the quantum healers, nothing happened to the quantum healers. If you own a quantum healer, it is still the same phenomenal tool that it always has been. It doesn't contain the energetics of the wisdom. Um, and the quantum healers, again, will be probably going on clearance sale because we don't have too many of those left. So if you do want a quantum healer, I'd grab them up because we're not going to make any more after yesterday. Um, let's see. Nika, how do you feel the energetics of the silver quantum wisdom different from the copper? You know, and to tell you the truth, I have not felt a difference with the silver and the copper in the wisdom. Um, I'm not really attracted to one over the other, actually. Uh, they both they both seem to create that same same field, same energetic from what I what I what I'm feeling from them. Um where the silver quantum healer actually was more attracted to the silver one. It just felt a little bit crisper, cleaner. But the, the, the quantum wisdoms in the silver and the copper, to me, feel the same. Um, so that's why, again, we put on there under the description of just going with what it is that, that you're drawn to more for the copper and the silver. Ethan, I put my wisdom wand through the regeneration tensor field generator and the energy and heat being felt was amazing. Do you have any inputs on using the wisdom wands with the different generators? <laughs> wow. You know, I saw that picture, Ethan, where you had the wisdom wand. Oh, no, wait. That was that was another one of our friends here um, that had the picture of the wisdom wand through that divine I am generator. And... It's, it is pretty amazing. Um, and then I know some people who have put it in with the Gaia spheres. Um, you know, I have not played enough with the Wisdom Wand and working with any of the other tools with it. As I was just pretty much focused on just the Wisdom Wand for quite some time and just sleeping with this one, being with this one all the time. Um, but I'll have to experiment with that, Ethan, and start playing with some of the other tools. But that's it, you guys, is that when you begin to experiment and just put different tools together, some amazing new things can come forward. I mean, there's there's so much unexplored yet um, in wisdom or in consciousness, and in wisdom, but in consciousness and in what these fields hold with these tools. Um, I think we're going to find that there is still so much more to these fields than we have even touched, um, which is super exciting. But yeah, please do play with all the different tools together. That's, you know, and, and it's going to be a combination that a lot of people, it's really fantastic for them, but maybe not so for others. But it seems like using the wisdom wand and the generators has been a pretty powerful thing for everybody. Let's see. Hey, Brian, I'm going to buy the big wisdom wand and was looking at the infinite light pendant or alchemist pendants. What are the differences and what do you feel would work better for health issues? So, hmm, you know, the infinite light pendant is still a pretty phenomenal pendant. It really is. Um, we were just having that discussion over this past week. So the infinite light pendant is still a great, great pendant. Um, the alchemist pendant, though, the alchemist pendant brings through that energetics of the wisdom. And the alchemist pendant is is one of the newer and the newer fields. And so I uh, I would almost suggest the, the alchemist pendant. Um, I'm almost thinking, too, though, that... Having the large wisdom wand is fantastic for sure. I'm almost wondering how the quantum wisdom would work for you. Um, 
And I know a lot of people use the, the mini wisdom wand as a pendant. It's still a little bit large, but you can still use it as a pendant. It's a very tangible one. Um, Yeah, sorry, Vicky. I'm just kind of looking there. You know, really, Vicky, I feel that the Wisdom Wand is going to be your number one tool um, for what you're wanting to do. And that whatever pendant you get is absolutely appropriate and perfect because it's just going to basically hold that support. So to me, I don't feel it's going to be the mini wands, the mini wisdoms. That infinite light feels pretty dang good that one to me feels a lot lighter for you and your field um yeah i i'd still say that infinite light pendant to me feels the lightest brightest for you um over even the alchemist pendant but of course the wand for sure i feel that one's gonna serve you wonderfully um Ethan, if for some reason the wisdom generator is not coming to be here on the third dimension Earth, would it be possible to have the wisdom energetic on some of the generators already created? <clears throat> um, so, you know, uh, Ethan, <laughs> it's been kind of a thing where once in a while when I'm twisting up generators like a golden fire generator or a divine I am generator that... I'm guided to bring in a little bit of the wisdom energy into those as well. Um, the first generators that I did, uh, the wisdom, I'm still wearing these because they're not fully the wisdom. They were kind of just made specifically for me, I feel, um, which I do shift and change energies in these a lot. But, um, Oh, gosh. I'm just trying to see here because I feel like we're going to be able to do those wisdom generators at some point in time. We have them all made. But the energetics is just not right yet. Um, and I think we're going to get there, and I hope that we get there sooner than later. But you can take a chancer field generator that you have and you can take your wisdom ring and you can bring your wisdom ring and your tensor field generator together being in the heart and you can ask that tensor field generator to carry whatever energies are in your highest and best and you may be able to shift that generator that you have into the wisdom and then it would be more like these generators that i wear that are wisdom and something else so that's what I would suggest, Ethan, is to use your wisdom ring or your wisdom wand and to just shift the energetics of that generator and uh, just bring that through yourself. Is you know, and I know you can do that for sure. And then once we get the the actual wisdom generators, that template itself figured out, then we'll be able to get these out into the world. But we're still not sure what their use is and you know what they're going to be for or what they're doing so uh let's see diane do the old quantum healers have the wisdom energy no and so that's it is any of the quantum healers that are still out there do not carry that energetics of the wisdom they are still just the quantum healer which are pretty flipping fantastic um and again we do still have a few quantum healers that we're going to be putting on clearance but i don't know if i'd wait for him to go on clearance because we only have like seven left of each each flavor so um if you are still interested in the quantum healer i'd grab those and the quantum healers that you have are still fantastic wonderful tools um we just have too many choices <laughs> so we have to take some of these choices off um so that's why the quantum healer is going just too many tools um let's see as a newbie please explain these wands i'm getting confused so gosh it's been over the years with the wands and and that's with all the tools is is that years ago we discovered the golden fire and light wand and that was our first wand 
Um, and actually, it was just the Golden Light wand at the time. Then we moved to the Golden Fire, and then we moved to the Golden Fire and Light. And they were all brass wands that you used to anchor columns of light and run energy. And then um, we came across, we, we made the Dragon Wand. And the dragon wand was just one you again any of the wands you can run energy with the dragons you just open up a field that the dragons work in and you can carry it and it just brings in that connection so like with your wisdom wand it's not like it's going to be always opening up a field the dragons wherever you go there's a dragon no it's based on your human attention your soul and what your soul's intent is um and and yeah that's it right there so i mean it's not like this is always a dragon wand the the wisdom wand it is when you intend it to be so then um after the dragon wand then we had the fairy wand which just works with the fey kingdom uh you know dragons and fairies don't always live in the same realm um, they're, they're in a different vibration from each other, though there's a lot of similarities. Um, and then there was the shaman's wand, which was made with one of the newer frequencies of energies that we had came across, which was the regeneration ring. And so the, the shaman's wand was the, the newer one until the quantum healer came along. And the quantum healer, we were trying to simplify things and bring them all into a single tool to be able to access all of the previous wands. And so now then it seems like the wisdom wand is now taking place of all of the wands before. So yeah, it does get a little bit confusing for sure. Um, you know, that's why we're going through the website. Um, is, is to try to clear up some of this confusion, try to clear up some of the old products that we've had on, you know, for, for years. So anyway, thank you for your patience being a newbie here and for traversing through all this. And soon we will have things looking a lot more um, accessible for the information and energies that come out. Uh, Ron, what gauge and twist is the wisdom practitioner made with? Oh, uh, let's see. So the larger wisdom wand is a 12 gauge. Um, it's a 12 gauge type twist. So it's, um, yeah, so that's, that's, oh, wait. Sorry, the wisdom practitioner, the, the wisdom practitioner ring. <laughs> My apologies. So the, the wisdom ring that we have, the wisdom practitioner ring, the 26 inch tensor ring is made out of a six gauge. Now the heaviest practitioner rings that we have, the great big, you know, size of your finger rings, those ones are a four gauge, the giant practitioner rings are. And then the wisdom practitioner ring is a six gauge. And then the, and it's a, a light twist as well. So it looks very similar to the heavy gauge rings. And then we get to the alchemist practitioner rings. And those ones are a tight eight gauge twist, which this is actually an eight gauge. So, no, oh, sorry, that's a 10. So I don't have a, an eight gauge here, but that the eight gauge on the practitioner wisdom rings are a little bit light and it is a tight twist, but they're a lot more affordable and the potency is still there with them being that lighter ring. Now the wisdom practitioner ring, it is that medium gauge between the two, but it looks more like those heavier rings. And it's definitely a heavier, heavier version. It's not, you know, pliable and bendable like the alchemist rings are. Well, let's see. JR, can you shift the energy of tuning forks with the wisdom wand or will it only shift tensor tools? So it can shift the, it can shift, you know, like the physical structure of the tuning forks. We have a friend who does Oregon, um, Mythica and in Colorado, and she uses the wisdom ring to uh, work with the molecular structure of the metals. And so 
you know, that wisdom field, the wisdom ring on tuning forks, you will work with that physical structure and the energetic structure of the tuning fork itself. But where I see it affecting the tuning fork the most is, is that when you're using the tuning fork and you have the ring within the field so that when the vibration is created, the physical vibration, that that vibration is within the field of the ring because the tensor fields will change the color of sound for those who have synthesia, who can see the color of sound, who can feel, know the color of sound or know sound waves in general. This can affect sound waves by having the tensor field and the physical sound waves together. Um, so that's how I would use it with the tuning fork is to basically use it with the physical vibrations themselves. Uh, Mirna, any plans on making earring sets with the wisdom wand? <laughs> I know everybody's always asking about earrings. Um, and these ones are still a little large. I would suggest if you want to make a pair of earrings, I'd almost go with a quantum healer. Um, we have gotten parts and pieces to try to weld to make studded earrings and things, but it's just, it just hasn't came through. Um, but yeah, if you're going to make earrings, I would suggest the quantum healers. And that's a great idea. I mean, yeah, we, we've certainly thought about earrings a lot before. Uh, Vicki, what energies or tools are good for clearing emotional past traumas? Wisdom wand. So what I would suggest is to actually just go to the December 3rd, 50 questions Friday. Towards the end, there is a meditation that we did of coming into the zero point and using those water rings that we have, which is just the wisdom field and the energetics of water. Um, in that meditation to bring that field of light in and to in the process release and so there are a lot of really simple and amazing um workable tangible ways to release these emotional traumas that we carry even from this lifetime um you know, it works really great for past lifetimes sometimes this lifetime we like to hold on but even from this lifetime, um, these fields are bringing us into an allowing, a letting go, a release of those traumas. Um, so, you know, the wisdom wand is a fantastic one for that, the wisdom tools in general. But using the wisdom wand or else you don't need the physical tool to do it either. You can simply go to that December 3rd, 50 Questions Friday, do that do that meditation that journey work of coming into the zero point space stepping into that column of light and allowing um, so the energy work is getting easier and easier right now it really is the soul the universe the earth mass consciousness everything 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 wants to see us get through this with quickness grace and ease and we are shifting and moving fast and nothing can stop it but it can be a little bit more graceful and easier and that just all comes in the allowing the surrendering which these tools also you know that's part of working with them too is that allowing and that surrendering um it's a whole new paradigm but boy it's a lot easier getting through things Ethan, I'm going to start wearing the regeneration tensor field generator with the wisdom ring. Is this good to change the energetics of the regeneration tensor field generator or just add the wisdom energetics to the energetics of the regeneration? Okay, so, you know, that's it too. If you are changing a tool, um, it's going to be your soul that's in charge. It will be your intentions as well. So if you are going to wear a wisdom ring and... Um, the regeneration generator together or if you're just sitting them together however it is that you're using them together you can have the intention that it shifts that regeneration generator 
and it may or may not. Your soul is the one who is in charge. Um, and if you just simply wear them together without that intention, um, you know, but if you're putting your attention onto there, like, okay, if you're worried, like, oh man, is that going to shift that generator or not? You're already kind of putting your attention there to, to make that happen. So what I would do is I would just put them together and say, okay, you guys, soul, me, let's all just play together and do what is in my highest and best. And then just let it go and see where it happens from there. Um, that's, that's what I would suggest Ethan is, um, just put them together and ask for that highest possible outcome and, and surrender it to that and see. All right. Feels like a very strange, slow moment day today. Um, yeah, it's just been an interesting, interesting time every day. seems like every day is so different, even. Um, just going back over here to the chat side to see what's happening. And just reading everybody's comments together here. Yeah, you guys are having a lot of fun. All right, so let's see if there's any more questions here before we leave for the day. Uh, yeah, Vicki, just had a dowser send me a document today. They haven't visited my property. They mentioned imposter energy attached to me and some others. What would work well? I want to buy a generator for the environment too. Hmm. Um, You know, the wisdom wand comes up still. Um, and you know, sometimes I think I'm biased because the wisdom wand is so phenomenal and it's like the newest tool. But the wisdom wand is what I see you working with there, Vicky. Vicky is, you know, doing the columns of light is huge. If that is in your wheelhouse, then please do consider doing the columns of light. But I see you simply holding that wisdom wand and walking through your your space your house and you're just expanding that field just having your intention of expanding that field and that wisdom field it's um it's pretty fantastic you don't have to do anything um for these fields to do some huge huge clearing repatterning restructuring of everything in your reality your environment your world um the, the wisdom wand it's is something that doesn't um respond to fears or thought forms things like that because the wisdom field responds to consciousness which is your soul um is heart-based your soul has the highest and best intentions for you um and it is that aspect which repatterns the energy um which does the clearing work so yeah vicky that's that's what i would suggest is just to use that wand and to just walk through and see that wand in you and that field and just that energy just expand and just clear everything out. Whew. Okay, well, I feel <laughs> I feel I feel it's happening already. I really do. Um, and with the wisdom, clear ley lines, etc. Too. Yes. Yeah, so the the wisdom wand now has in it all of the tools, including the golden fire and light wand. The golden fire and light wand is the tool for doing the work with geopathic geomagnetic portal vortexes um, you know which are just knots in energy of of intersecting geomagnetic lines um, so for working with the earth 
the earth geomagnetics, the earth energies, then yeah, the wisdom wand is going to carry the golden fire and light, higher dimensional aspect, which is that golden, um, the golden light rod, which is the one who works so well with the earth energies. So again, um, if you are able to to work with this with columns of light, just simply, and it's just as simple as going into that heart space with the three breaths, using your intention and imagination of just a column of light being created there or a ball of light, um, just using your wand and intending that that energy of the wand expand out and stay in your home. It can be as simple as that. Um, when we're doing these, this type of creation, columns of light, a lot of the videos, you know, that I do, they walk you through a lot of heady stuff. But in reality, any of the consciousness work that we do has to be simple to be still from the heart. When we get really heady, it's our, our consciousness is no longer in the heart. So the columns of light, um, you can watch the video that we did on solstice, but that's really heady. Um, but watch it and then find the way to do the column of light in your way. That is simple. That is easy. And once you start doing it, it may seem too easy, but then once you start to note the shifts and changes that occur, then you're like, okay, simplicity is powerful. Um, it's just that sometimes simplicity is not powerful because we won't allow it to be because we need things more complicated. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> sorry for that soapbox there. All right. Mary Louise, any suggestions what we do with the older tools? I currently have them hanging over curtain rods throughout the house, hopefully clearing all the energies. Yes, you know... That's the same with me. With all the older tools that I have, they are still sitting everywhere. They're over the faucets. They're under plants. They're on aquariums. They're, um, you know, on the fridge in the medicine cabinet. So what to do with the older tools that you have? You know, the older tools are still very viable tools. Maybe maybe you might have outgrown some of them which is a very much a possibility because i know when you were first with us it was when we were first starting out um you know of creating the tools and a lot of the tools that we created back then just are not the same as the tools we're creating today over the past couple of years or or so um to revive some of those tools, what I would suggest is a wisdom wand or a wisdom ring of any size. Take your wand, take your old tool, go into the heart, take that breath, run the energy to your tool with the intention of reviving it, of making it the highest and best for you. Simple intentions, wanding it, and then seeing how it goes. It will shift your tools. So then the tools will be nothing specific. It's not like this is going to be a galactic harmony generator now or something. Um, but it's going to be different, and it's going to be for you. And so when you change any of your tools, basically when I do it, like for my bracelets, I do my bracelets all the time. I change them, bring, I, what I do is I work with them with intent that they carry the highest potentials, possibilities, frequencies, energies that I need for the day. And that's it. These wisdom fields will allow you to shift and change a lot of things. And you can do that with your tools and crystals and water and food and beds, cars, buildings, all of it. Um, 
Nika, what would be the best tool to clear pathogens, bacteria, fungus, viruses, etc.? Wisdom wand. Um, but in reality, so if you have, because bacteria, fungus, viruses, they all are consciousness. They all have a field of consciousness. And a lot of these um, thrive in denser vibrations, like, you know, maybe fungus, certain bacteria that are non-beneficial bacteria. You know, the world's full of all kinds of bacteria and most of it we need. But for non-beneficial bacteria, um, usually those are also thriving in a lower dense energy space. So as you bring the tools and any tools into a space, you know, like a tensor field generator, where so people throughout the years have always asked about mold remediation. And about the only thing that I could say about mold remediation is bringing in that generator, um, asking the generator to clear, to, to raise the frequency and vibration of everything, asking the consciousness of that mold um, to, to just be complete, be gone, to release, um, transform, go away you know, whatever, well, go away, but in, you know, <laughs> not being in a fearful or angry way at it, um, to just asking it to be complete. And um, so when you are working with, with any of these um, pathogens, bacteria, fungus, virus, work with them as a conscious being that they are. And, you know, when we see a virus and a virus comes in to, to us, to our bodies, we give gratitude through the virus and say, hey, we know that you do physical changes on the DNA. You can help to restructure DNA, scientifically, scientifically proven. And it's what we see anyway. So as the virus comes in, we just ask that it is working with us in the highest and best good. And um, yeah, and just, just treat it as consciousness. So, the wisdom wand to me would be the best field to work with these pathogens. So for your bacteria, fungus, viruses, I would use the wisdom wand to create a space. You know, you can call it a column of light, but creating a space. So imagining, so your wisdom wand creates this um, cocoon around you. And then within that cocoon is just all of your light. It's like that zero point space. It's bringing everything that you are as a soul into that beautiful cocoon that you are, your light. So as you create that cocoon full of your light with the wisdom wand, you can imagine that field extending and covering your space. Um, so, you know, when we're using the tools, the columns of light is still a little bit heady and for some people a little bit too far out there. So when you use the wisdom wand, just imagine that cocoon around you with all of that light inside and that it just expands and that that can be what you use to put your column of light into that space to work with those pathogens. Um, do pathogens qualify as entities and or implants? And, you know, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not so caught up so much on the jargon with um, pathogens, but I do know that they are a, um, well, yes, they are, they do have consciousness. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit more about your Sacred Heart sessions? Um, yes. Hey, Joe. Um, tell them that I'm on a webinar and that I'll be done in about a half an hour. Um, so let's see. Um, the, the other the other studio is open. The shop is open. But the studio will be open around noon today. Can you point her out, Joe? Yeah. All right. So let's see. Can you tell us a little bit more about your Sacred Heart sessions? Um, yeah, the Sacred Heart sessions that we, that I do, um, they're 15 minutes long. And basically what I do is I, I hold space, um, 
and come over here. We work underneath the pyramid um, and I hold space for basically for the 15 minute session that it is. Um, I walk you into the heart space and um, basically we walk you into that zero point space where you align all that you are and you bring your soul's light in. And the space that I hold is that energy of the wisdom and of the Bosnian pyramid complex and all of that. So that when you come aligned into that space, your soul does the work and everything just begins to clear and release. And then, um, so that's a really fast process. Um, you know, and then after that, you know, five minutes of, of that, we then end up to where something, you know, your soul will, will present what it is that there's something still to work on. And so then once, um, you know, once your soul will present and it does that in various ways, either it will show to me or else I'll ask you of anything that came up, whether it's a physical, mental, emotional situation. Um, and then from there, we just hold space more for it and do whatever unraveling and releasing work for that particular issue that came up. Um, so it's, uh, it's a fast session, but we cover a lot in that session. Now, some of the people who've had sessions with me have said that I've came to them either in dreams or else they started noticing the shifts or I've came to them other ways before our actual, you know, telephone session was, and a lot of the work begins to happen then, you know, and that's, most people will talk about that when you go to a healer or especially to Brenda, you know, that, that stuff just starts to happen when you have the intention of booking the session. Um, or as soon as you book the session and then um, let's see from there well, I've had a few people say that it was really intense that they went through some detox style of of, of things that evening afterwards um, but that's only been a couple of the people most of the people it's not um, so what I usually say at the beginning of our session is is that you know, like with my sister Brenda, hers is gentle. Hers goes over the course of two weeks. If you want something a little bit more gentle and easy, uh, I'd go with Brenda. And also with Brenda, she has the ability to talk to the innate consciousness of the physical body. So if you have different physical certain things, she's a better body talker and soul talker. For me, I work with the soul and I work with the, the mind. And that's where we have the conversations. I have the conversation with the mind as I'm working with the soul and talking to the soul to get the mind into alignment with what it is that the soul wants to see completed or brought through or whatever the case. Um, so with me, I like to get things done. I mean, I like to just move through it and be done with things. And you're never going to get too much because, you know, your soul is always there in charge. And your soul will never let anything too, you know, detrimental happen to you, like in the detoxes or the whatevers. I mean, I've been laying on the floor writhing in pain from chakra migrations before. Thought I was going to die several times. And the soul just stands there. It's like, yeah, you'll live, you know, type thing. So that's that's kind of where, where I go. But not to that extreme that we would have in our sessions. Um, you know, but our sessions I do like to get in, do the work and be complete. And then from there, we just ask that it all comes through in grace and ease. And so um, that's just something that I've added into the field since, since then is grace and ease. So I'm not trying to scare anybody off. I'm just saying that if you want gentle and easy to um, look up my sister, Brenda, otherwise, if you just want to get in, get it done, then yeah, then session with me is a good way to go. Uh, Wayne, which tools work well against AI? I wear the talk pendant, but my devices still get affected when I visit dense electrical areas. Also, the refer a friend link is not working for the receiver. Oh no, the refer a friend link's not working. Okay, I'll have to look into that. I was wondering why things weren't happening there. Let me take a look at that, refer a friend. Um, 
So which tools work against AI? The wisdom fields to me are going to be the most beneficial with working with AI. Um, it's the wisdom fields because the wisdom fields contains the most consciousness. To me, to to work with AI, I think um, you know to shift any harmful aspects of AI. I believe working in consciousness is absolutely the best way to do that. And working with these wisdom fields, I feel is going to be the most beneficial tool. So, um, so yeah, the wings of talk pendant, that would have been one that I would have thought to, but I'd almost say to add one of the wisdom, you know, maybe even just the, the mini wisdom one versus the, the micro. Um, and that's what I wear on my wings of talk. You know, I left mine in the car because I just wore this for today, um, just for our our webinar. But I usually have been wearing my Wings of Talk pendant along with the, the mini wand. Um, and to me, those two together have been pretty fantastic. That's That's been my daily go-to for some time. Um, and then to Wayne, you know, if you don't want to, again, you don't have to buy a wand. You can actually just go through and do the columns of light and have the attunement to that that we did on solstice and basically you know with the attunements you you receive the energetics of that quantum tool that you use and then you can just use the columns of light and place those in those dense areas as well if you don't want to you know purchase a tool all right well you guys it looks like I should probably sign off here pretty shortly. Thank you all for being here on chat too. Hey Pam, oh, thank you for recommending the Sacred Heart session. Intense and profound, I am very glad. Um, all right, so again, thank you all for being here and yeah, be sure to breathe, let go, allow all the fun stuff in this new paradigm, and wishing you all truly a year of wisdom, abundance, and health. All right, we'll see you next time.